Okay, so at this time we've now completed uh, the entire map. We know we now know how to factor two term, three term, and four term polynomials, and uh, we can kind of look at it uh, from the entire perspective. Uh, you'll see here some examples of how to do each one in these boxes. Um, if you're interested in uh, kind of reviewing those. Uh, and this this map is also provided to you in in the course as well. Uh, there are two last steps. Once you do the factoring, there are two last things that you should always do when doing a problem. This being probably the most important. Sometimes we can do some factoring, and as we factor things down, um, we need to actually check and see if any of the things we factored can factor more because there's actually times when things can factor more you'll do all these steps you'll do it exactly right and then when you're done you may still be left over with something that can factor and so uh, that's a really important thing to do I want to show you an example of that just to make sure everybody's aware that sometimes you can factor and even though you're you, you do it right there's more to be done let's take a look okay so here's an example uh, I've got x cubed plus 5x, that should be squared, 5x squared minus 9x minus 45. And we want to factor this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the entire map um, and ask myself, first of all, is there any common stuff to be factored out of this? Uh, nope, I'm not seeing any common, greatest common factors in these. Okay, good. So then I ask myself, how many terms? One, two, three, four. So four-term polynomial, um, if I'm following the map here, means I factor by grouping. Okay, so factor by grouping. That's uh, when I cut the problem in half and I factor the left side. So I get x squared and I'm left with x plus 5. And I factor out the right side. Looks like I can take out a minus 9, leaving me with x plus 5. So I divide this by negative 9 and this by negative 9 and I get x plus 5. So I've got a common parenthesis. I pull that out. I'm left with x plus 5. And here, uh, what's left over, once I pull the parentheses out, it is x squared minus 9, this stuff right here. So x squared minus 9. Sweet. So we factored it correct. Now, as we continue down the map, it tells us that we need to check, because we may have done everything right, but there may be more factoring involved. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, x plus 5, that doesn't factor more. But this is interesting right here x squared minus 9. That seems like a two-term polynomial that we can factor more when we just talked about this. Remember, if you have a two-term binomial and it's a perfect square with differences, this is a uh, meaning subtraction, I've got a perfect square, perfect square, and subtraction, it factors more. And so we need to apply that rule to x squared minus 9. Again, we can take the square root of x squared. It's x. Square root of 9 is 3. So I get x plus 3 and x minus 3. And this is our final answer uh, for the factoring. So again, it's important to remember that once you're done factoring, take a look at your answer and ask yourself, does this, are, do any of these factor more? Because it turned out that this right here did factor more using uh, a two-term uh, solution. The last step then tells us that uh, once we've factored, we can simply multiply all of our factors together using uh, you know, distribution, multiply these all back out, and we could get the original polynomial. I'm not going to do that in this situation. Uh, just know that you can do that and check your answers uh, to make sure that you're right. Okay, let's give you guys two problems that factor down more. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here are two problems that we'd like to like you to try out. Go ahead and start to factor these. Remember that these will factor more. Once you do it once, uh, you're going to get an answer, and you're going to want to look at those and see if you can't factor it more. Both of these are examples of, of polynomials that factor more. So go ahead and pause your video and uh, give these a shot. Let's see how you do. Okay, how'd you do? This is a four-term polynomial. I know how to factor a four-term polynomial. We like to cut it in half. I'm going to change my color here. We like to cut it, cut it right in half. And I'm going to take out x squared on this side, leaving me with x minus 7. Over here, we're going to take out a negative 4. I'm going to divide this by negative 4, and I get x. Divide this by negative 4, I get minus 7. So these parentheses are the same, and I get x minus 7. And what would be left over? Well, it would be this x squared and this minus 4. OK, great. Now. 
Hopefully you didn't say that was done, because these problems factor more. So I'm looking at x squared minus 4. This factors more. It's a two-term polynomial. Uh, that is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. So this factors down. So I've got the x minus 7. That doesn't do anything. But this does factor into two parentheses, x and x, 2 and 2, 1 plus, 1 minus. And that is my answer. How'd you do? Hopefully you did all right. Let's take a look at number two here. Number two, uh, this is a two-term polynomial. No common stuff here. Uh, two-term polynomial with no common stuff. So the only way I know how to factor a two-term polynomial is with difference of squares. So I'm going to take the square root of x to the fourth. Ooh, square root of x to the fourth. So what times what gets me x to the fourth? Well, that would be x squared. OK, good. And the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to write two parentheses out. And I get x squared plus 4, x squared minus 4. OK. So I factored these down. However, I told you at the beginning that one of these may factor down more. So x squared plus 4, does it factor down more? Well, it's a perfect square. Perfect square, ooh, but it's addition. Remember, you can't factor perfect squares with addition. So we're just going to write that one out. Now this one here, x squared minus 4, that is a perfect square. Uh, and it's a subtraction. So uh, x and 2 are the square roots. So I get x2, x2, 1 plus, 1 minus. And that is our solution. Again, some people may say, well, wait, hey, you didn't factor this one. Remember, different square, uh, s squares can only be factored when it's subtraction, when it's subtraction. And so because that's an addition, we just leave it right there. OK, great. How'd you do? Let's take a look at uh, another one. OK, so uh, it's time to do uh, an entire review of everything we've learned about factoring. What we have done, what I've done here is created six questions that basically cover all of the factoring topics that we've talked about. Two term, three term, four term. Uh, we talked about taking out the common stuff. And we also talked about looking at our answer to make sure that nothing else factors. So uh, here are six mixed questions. We'd like you to give them a try. Go ahead and pause the video. Take out your video notebook and work on these bad boys. See if you can get all six. This is where uh, we hope you can uh, get these. These are kind of the ones that um, we'll expect you to be able to get. So go ahead and give them a try. Push the play button to uh, check your answers. And if you miss it, make sure to uh, study it so you understand uh, which concept was used and how to get the correct answer. OK, welcome back. Let's take a look. This first one here, number one, uh, any common stuff? No common stuff that I can see. I then count the terms. I got one, two, three terms. So this is a three-term polynomial. The next question I ask myself, is the a value 1? Yes, the a value is 1. So all I need to do is find the factors of c that add up to b. So I need to find the factors of 15 that are going to add up to negative 2. So let's write out the factors. The factors of 15, 1 and 15, uh, that's not going to get me 2. There's 5 and 3. Ooh, I can get negative 2 if I made the 5 negative. That's going to work. So these are our factors that work. So I'm going to go ahead and write those in, x minus 5 and x plus 3. And that is our answer for number 1. OK, let's take a look at number two. Number two, any common stuff? Uh, does anything come out of 4 and 49? No, I don't think so. So uh, next step, count the terms. I've got one, two terms. So two terms. When I have a two-term polynomial, I want to look for perfect squares. Do I have perfect squares? Square root of 49y squared. Ooh, that's a perfect square. That's 7y. And square root of 4 is a perfect square. That's 2. And we have subtraction. So therefore, this factors 2. 7y plus 2 and 7y minus 2. Yes. OK, good. Question number three, uh, common stuff. I don't see any common stuff here. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 terms is what we've got. A four-term polynomial means that we factor by grouping. So I chop it in half over here on the left side. Going to take out the common stuff for the left side. Looks like x squared comes out, leaving me with x plus 2. Over here, I've got negative 25 and negative 50. What comes out of that? I'm going to pull out a negative 25. That leaves me with x plus 2. These are common parentheses. I pull them out, x plus 2. 
and I'm left with x squared minus 25. So when I pulled the parentheses out, all I had left was x squared minus 25. Ooh, am I done? <clears throat> Not done. This actually factors a little more. This is a perfect square here, because the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 25 is 5. So that factors down just a little more. Right, my final answer will be x plus 2, x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay, sweet. Question number four. I come over here. Question number four, first question I ask myself, is there any common stuff? I am seeing some common stuff here on this one, I think. Uh, three goes into six and 15. So I'm going to pull out a three. I'm also going to pull out an x squared. I pull out an x squared. So uh, when I pulled out the three, I'm left with two. When I pull out an x squared, I'm left with x cubed. Then I pulled out three x squared here. I'm left with five. And that's all I can do. This is a two-term polynomial, but it's not perfect squares. And so therefore, that is my answer. And it's also plus. Pluses don't factor down in perfect squares. OK, good. Next one. Uh, any common stuff between 3, 8, 6? I don't see anything. Count the terms. 1, 2, 3 terms. Three-term polynomial. OK, next question I ask myself is the first value. The a value is 3. So, because the first value is 3 and it's not 1, we need to use the AC rule. So I'm going to take A times C. 3 times 6 is 18. And I want to find the factors of 18 that are going to get me 8. So, factors of 18. Factors of 18. Here we go. Uh, there's 1 and 18. There's uh, 6 and 3. There is 9 and 2. There is... Um, that looks like about it. Am I going to get 8 out of any of these? I don't see getting 8 out of any of these. And so therefore, because we can't get 8, we're going to get non-factorable. OK. OK, on this last one here, uh, I'm going to ask myself, uh, any common stuff? There's none. I have three terms. The first value is 1, so I'm just going to take the factors of 36 that add to 12. Factors of 36 that add to 12. Well, there's 1 and 36. There's 2 and 18. There's, ooh, 6 and 6. Let's do that. 6 and 6. So I get x plus 6 and x plus 6. Because these are the same, we can actually write it as x plus 6 squared if you want to. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. Um, whenever they're the same, we call this a perfect uh, a perfect trinomial square because it comes out to be both of the factors come out to be the same so this is a perfect trinomial square okay great well nice work with those um, that is the lesson for the week uh, well not the week but for uh, this video thanks for watching and you can continue on to the assignment have a great day